Hello again and uh, welcome back to uh, another video in my series um, of Creative Being, encouraging you to be your best, explore your, your authentic creative self and maybe release and discover something new about what you can do creatively. Um, my name is Ellie Atchison Mastery, and this day you can't see my face, you can just see what I'm working on. <laughs> and uh, I started this with some pastels yesterday, actually as it happens I'm going into my son's school um, to do a bit of pastel painting with um, with those primary school kids. Um, so I thought, oh, it's, uh, maybe I'd better get out my pastels. I haven't used them for a while and work a bit with them. And as I was working on this yesterday, I thought, do you know what? Maybe I'll try and make a video where I'm in the process of doing something that's already underway and sharing with you a little bit of the process that I'm going going through, perhaps as I rediscover this medium to, to share it with you as well. So um, this, a study of these fabulously sweet scented carnations. I love, I love to grow in my garden. There are, uh, I've brought, brought some in and just put them in a little pot. Um, I love the colours and um, I've got a range of pastels here you can see in front of me. I've got these artist quality pastels which are um, basically the artist quality pigments but made up into a kind of a chalk and I've got a range of lots of different colours here. They get kind of quite dusty when they're used so I tend to work with a piece of paper here as well. So um, if I'm picking up one, I'm maybe not sure what colour it is exactly. If I look at that one, you can't really tell what, what colour it is until you until you make a mark on the paper, then you can see it. Okay, that's actually something. Those are the same. They don't look the same on the outside because they got so dusty. That one's a bit different. So I always like to work with a bit of paper here to kind of test out the colour before I use it. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this as I'm doing it because maybe it's a slightly different approach. You might find it helpful if you've a bit daunted about how to work with pastels, I don't know. The first thing I'm going to say is, okay, um, I'm going to aim for something that looks like carnations at the end of the day because I'm doing, I'm enjoying a an objective drawing, I'm using my perception and sharpening up my perception um, on this occasion. Um, but I'm also not going to worry too much about exact um, colour accuracy because you can't get too concerned about that if you if you want to enjoy pastel painting in the beginning okay so for example I'm working on this this pink here this is pink it's like a small carnation and I've picked up a pink it's not exactly the same color way well, hey, these are very fragile and this one's just dropped out the end there so I'll just put that one there um, it's not exactly the same color um, but it's near enough and what I'm going to do is when I'm looking at a, a something like that for the first time, if you look at it accurately and even squint a bit as you're looking at it, you'll see there's a whole range of different tones of pink within that flower and how you render those different tones will make it look more or less realistic if that's kind of what you're aiming for or you really want to make that sort of a study. Maybe it's something you'll take on into something something else or um, you know after you've done the study or maybe it'll be a finished piece or just doing it for pleasure or whatever. Um, so when I start off looking at this I'm just going to pick out what is for me the most dominant colour that is there, the dominant, and for me it's this kind of mid-tone pink, it's not exactly the pink I've got there um, but that's I'm going to kind of create an impression of that by the way I use it and the way I'm starting off with this one, in fact maybe I'll just start off another one down there so you get me, you know, you see me starting from the beginning um, I'm not going to worry too much about the exact shape of everything um, but I'm just going to position it down here I've actually had to move things around since yesterday because some of these died off so <laughs> I'm just going to start this down here and all I'm going to do to begin with is just really look for a kind of approximate shape okay so let's move that down a bit all I'm looking to do at the beginning is just create an approximate shape of the the object I've got in front of me I'm going to position the petals a little bit but I'm actually just going to sort of Colour that in like that. Now one of the most important tools you'll use in pastel painting, you know we actually call it pastel painting rather than pastel drawing, even though it's dry and um, it kind of can look quite painterly, is one of the most important tools you'll use is your fingers. Okay and I'm just going to, and we've got this beautiful softness you know and, and it starts actually to get a sort of slightly painterly quality just by smudging that um, and you've got some nice pink tones there you can plug them somewhere else. Um, or on the paper there okay so I've just started off you can see it's just a really approximate shape to that now I'm going to look at a little bit more now and I'm going to squint my eyes as I look at it and I'm going to um, pick out some slightly brighter areas by pressing down again on that a little bit more now um, and then I'm going to actually draw the edges a little bit with that now 
Your pastels tend to break very, very easily. They're very fragile. Um, they have a beautiful buttery, buttery texture though. I love that. Um, I've also got some fine Conte ones here that if you want to get quite a sharper edge, sometimes I use these a little bit harder um, on the edge of that to get that sort of beautiful deckled edge that's so um, particular to this particular flower. And you see, obviously, I'm doing this on a black paper. Uh, we often paint pastels on a coloured ground. Um, pastel paper comes in all co kinds of beautiful shades and colours, but for added drama, sometimes it's just fun to do it on a pure black card, which is what I've got here. And I'm expecting to do something with the children <laughs> on this week as well. I thought I'd, I'd get them doing something on black because you get that lovely kind of um, impression quite quickly um, of a dramatic shape. Okay, so I'm going to look now for a slightly paler pink that I'll blend into that or what I often find, I have to test these out here, I'm not sure which one is going to be the right sort of pink. I've even got one of my, my son's got a little set here. Um, it's a less expensive kind of pastel but I'm going to blend that in a bit there. So I'm just going to use a paler colour on top there. And I'm going to find maybe another Where's my pinks? Where's my pinks? Hang on. Aha, there they are. Over here. Um, I might find another slightly different sort of pink. Now, it's often the case, because you're not mixing the colours together, you've got to mix the pastels as if they were paints almost, actually on the surface. That's the wrong colour, that's a peachy colour. But I'm not going to freak out, even if I'm recording it. I'm going to look for another pink that's closer. There must be one here somewhere. There we go, that's a sort of... So I'm looking to create some of those lighter areas and I'm going to blend that one on, on top as well. This one is, what's that colour? That's a slightly darker one, that's quite handy for beginning to add in the darker tones but I think I'd see the slightly more purpley colour. I've got one somewhere here. Oh, there we go. That's nice. So you can just test it out down there and then um, work with that. What, a very useful technique is that kind of, I mentioned it just a couple of times there, squinting your eyes, because what that does, it starts to separate separate out the different tonal areas. So you can see, okay, that's a bit, that's quite a lot darker there. Um, and what we can use, that's a sort of dramatically dark one. There, let's, let's try some of that. There we go, adding that in there. And I've also got another tool here, um, which is basically some sort of compressed cardboard that you can blend those shapes together with. There. So basically rubbing, rubbing the colours together in a more detailed way. It's a bit, I want to be a bit more accurate than my finger smudging that. i have a bit more of this dark, dark colour down here. Once you go into the centre of the flower, away from the light, it starts to get really quite dark in there. It doesn't look pink anymore. The colour I'm using is almost like a dark brown here. But the important thing is that the tone, the shade of it, if it's light or dark, the tone is right. I'm going to add that, add that pink on top. Um, I'm realising as I go along that I might need to get some more colours for my set. And then I'm going to make that a very much lighter one up here. Um, and what I've also got here to help me out a bit since I haven't got a full colour range is I've got some pastel pencils. Um, these ones are by Conti and these are quite good for adding in that detail. So this is another pink but it's a much lighter one. It's not exactly the pink I've got there, it's more like a cerise version but this is kind of, it's close in tone so I'm going to use it and not worry too much about it being a replica. After all, I kind of, you know, photography can do replicas. <laughs> I want to express myself then. And maybe use a dark one. Let's use a dark purple here. To go in and get a bit darker. Now, as I'm going along, the other thing that I might do is just give it a little bit of a spray to fix it. There's some good quality fixative sprays um, that you can get, which are sort of purpose-built. 
but for regular trying things out and experimenting um, hairspray will sort of do just as well any particular hairspray probably not too scented why spoil the scent of these lovely carnations so I'm just going to give that a bit of spray not too close up because you'll blast all the dust off the surface so just let it sort of lie down you see you kind of immediately quite a lot of it's just gone dark it sort of almost seems to have lost it but don't panic and get it back in a minute and I've got the window open so that's good we're not breathing that in too much and I'll get the centre carnations back in a minute now it's so dark it's almost a black there but you know the other trick with I'm going to talk about colour color theory in some of my other videos um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here but if we think about the complementary colour that's to say on a colour wheel a colour chart if you've got red what you would find is a red being a primary colour I mentioned it before um, the next circle of the colours is the secondary colours, which are the mixes of the primary colours together. So what you find on the colour wheel opposite red is green. I think I'd probably better show you that one day if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But I'm just going to tell you, opposite red is green. So if ever you're trying to create a shadow area in something that is red or pinky red, go for green. Go for a, a, a green in the tone that you're looking for, and you can either mix it in with that red or apply it on top. So I've chosen like a sort of an olive green here as an approximate complement to this pink and that does not look green at all but it gives the effect of creating a shadow area especially when you go further away from it and especially if you mix it mix it in um, you can experiment with different greens um, actually, I'm going to go for the darker green I've got in my pastel set here. I think that's a nice, yeah, that's a really lovely sort of sage green. I'm going to add that in down there and the top of that bit. I'm building it in layers, actually. And then I'm going to add this dark pink, which is the one I've got here. This one, it's almost a maroon, actually. It's not pink at all, really, on top. To create impression of that darker darker area um, and I'm going to look for an even darker one I'll find one in a minute I'm going to give it a bit more of a spray it's a process of building it up in layers and exploring and not worrying about too much about making any sort of mistakes really because the journey is part of the fun as soon as you put yourself in the position where you're saying, I have to get this right, and it has to be like this, and oh, that's not right, I can't get it, I can't, and all that sort of stuff, you create, you create a massive tension inside of yourself, which kind of, frankly, takes away some of the pleasure of doing it. As much as I love art classes, and I've taught lots of art classes, I think people, sometimes they feel to doing things in front of other people that they get a bit more self-conscious about it, and it they feel they have to and it's and I always think as well you know my son's coming up to that age where he's concerned about things being looking exactly as they should in real life and being actually very frustrated to even try something out if it doesn't look immediately like like in real life but if you think how popular the artists like the impressionists have been in history and although they most of them would have been very highly academically trained and able to do extremely accurate objective drawing and painting. They developed styles of painting that were more approximate and more loose in their rendering that have been you know, probably singly the most important and famous art movement in, Western, in the Western world right up until this day people still love their work. So, on the journey of discovering and the journey of observational work like this, you know, just take the hand of judgment off yourself a bit, okay? Because otherwise you'll just get yourself all vexed. <laughs> um, I'm looking for a really pale pink now. I've got a really, really super pale pink. Everything's so dusty here. There we go. So, if you've never tried pastel painting and you've got the opportunity to try it, you can kind of give it a go and just have a bit of fun with it. 
really can begin to get a sense of that emerging as a shape of a flower but it's not like a highly 100% accurate object and I don't care because I'm just enjoying it and the wonderful thing about doing accurate objects you know once you if you've been through all the whole art school process and you've you can do you basically draw anything standing on your head and half blindfolded is that you then get to really explore what you can express but it is lovely sometimes I love sometimes just to come back to doing something that is based on observation and it's like you kind of sort of sink yourself into the beauty of the object and some, just something so tiny and humble as a flower can just become like with that fragrance and this peaceful occupation just um, a journey of peacefulness which I think is kind of nice for the soul, you know. And I want a really dark colour now to fill that in. And I've got anything super dark. Da, 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 da. Where have I found something dark today? Ah, oh, maybe in this magic dark box here. That's like a super dark purple. Wow. So you kind of use what you have if you just you know, can just start off with a small set of um, pastels. You've done your birthday list. Christmas is nowhere close. <laughs> well, not while I'm recording this. It might be later on, but it's not while I'm recording this. Um, most of the artist companies make make pastels, and so you can get kind of look for a set and get you going with the basics, and then and blow very gently just to remove some of the dust from that and give another spray and you can just build into it a little bit more, a little bit more as you go on. So, if you've got any questions or feedback I'd love to hear from you and uh, you can contact me, you can direct message me on Instagram, I'm elliatchesnellmastery um, or you can leave your comments below and subscribe, I'd love to hear from you, thank you so much for tuning in, watching and listening and thanks very much. Have a great have a great day. Bye.